Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today in part 16 of DP203 exam Q&A series, we are going to cover 10 very important questions and today we will focus on Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. Friends, we have already covered 186 questions on DP203 certifications in last 15 parts. This includes a case study as well that I covered in the part 15 last week. A must watch for anyone preparing for DP203 certification. For the full course coverage, watch all the previous parts that will not just prepare you on the question and answer level, but also make you conceptually prepared for the examination. Plus, I have shared a lot of Microsoft documentation to help you study further. And as always, I will share a free PDF file containing all the 10 questions with answers discussed in this video. And for that, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 192 and 193. Answers to both these questions are covered in this very video. Good to mention that you can get PDF for all the previous parts as well. Just watch them answer a couple of questions and get your PDF file that you can use to learn in offline mode. So let's get started. So let's begin our part 16 with question number 187. The question says that you have an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool named pool1 and a database named db1. Now db1 contains a fact table named table1 you need to identify the extent of the data skew in the table one. What should you do in CNAP Studio? Here you can see that we are given with four options. The first two options are related to the build in pool and then the last two options are related to the pool one. Now let me take you to the Microsoft documentation and let's check out what Microsoft has to say in this question. So here you can see that I am on a documentation that reads as cheat sheet for the dedicated SQL pool in Azure Synapse Analytics. Here you can see if you scroll a little bit, you will reach to a section which is named as tips. And in the tips section, you can read to this point that you should use sys.dm underscore pdw underscore nodes underscore db underscore partition underscore stats to analyze any skewness in the data. So this is where we are getting our answer from. By the way, friends, if someone of you do not know what is DBCC, then this is the documentation. Here you can see that it says that the Transact SQL programming language provides DBCC statements that acts as a database console commands for the SQL server. I will leave the link for this documentation in the description box. Coming back to our question, now we know the correct answer for this question is option D. Now let's jump on to the question number 188. The, the question says that you have an Azure Data Factory named ADF1. You currently publish all the pipeline authoring changes directly to ADF1. You need to implement version control for the changes made to the pipeline artifacts. And then it says the solution must ensure that you can apply version control to the resources currently defined in the UX authoring canvas for ADF1. Which two actions should you perform? Your options are from the UX authoring canvas, select setup code repository. The second option is create a Git repository. The third one is create a GitHub action or the fourth one is create an Azure data factory trigger. Fifth one is from the UX authoring canvas, select publish. And the last one is from the US authoring canvas, run publish all. Now friends, here you have to understand the ask of the question is to implement the version control for the changes made to the pipeline artifacts. Now here on the Microsoft documentation, which says source control in Azure Data Factory, it clearly says that by default, the Azure Data Factory user interface experience authors directly against the Data Factory service. This experience has following limitation. The Data Factory service does not include a repository for storing the JSON entities for your changes. The only way to save changes is via publish all button and all the changes are published directly to the data factory service. Please remember publish all. And before I leave this documentation, I want to bring your attention to this video here. And in this video, you can really understand how to set up CI CD in Azure Data Factory directly from Microsoft, a must watch if you want to really understand how CICD works 
for Azure Data Factory. So now based on the documentation from the Microsoft, we can easily answer this question. The answer to this question is option A and option F. I hope you remember publish all. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 189. The question says that you have an Azure Data Factory instance named ADF1 and two Azure Synapse Analytics workspaces named WS1 and WS2. ADF1 contains the following pipeline. So here we are given with two pipelines, pipeline P1 and pipeline P2. Let's read out. It says that uses a copy activity to copy the data from non-partition table in a dedicated SQL pool of WS1 to an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen2 account. The pipeline 2 on the other hand uses a copy activity to copy data from text delimited files in an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen2 account to a non-partition table in a dedicated SQL pool of WS2. You need to configure P1 and P2 to maximize parallelism and performance. Which dataset setting should you configure for the copy activity for each pipeline? Here you can see that we are given with P1 and P2 which are nothing but the pipelines. And for each pipeline you are given with set of four activities. Out of these activities, you have to select one for each of the pipeline. Now let me show you the correct answers first and then I will give the Microsoft documentation to support my answer. So the correct answer for both of the pipelines that I have picked is Polybase for the P1 and also the Polybase for the P2. Now friends, to be very honest, the answer for P2 can also be bulk insert, but because I found that Polybase is faster option, that's why I have selected Polybase instead of bulk insert. So this is the Microsoft documentation that I was just referring to. It says that design a Polybase data loading strategy for the dedicated SQL pool in Azure Synapse Analytics. This is exactly the components which were also given in our question as well. Now here in this documentation, of course, you can read all about the ETL process, which is the extract, transform and load. If you come down, you can also watch a great video here. But the section where I want you to focus is this one, which says extract the source data into text file. Here it says that Polybase external file formats and you can see that Polybase loads the data from UTF-8 and UTF-16 encoded delimited text files. You can also see that Polybase also loads the data from Hadoop file formats, RC file, ORC and Parquet. So if there is a change in the question and instead of text file, they give you any file format which are listed here, then also please keep in mind that you have to select Polybase as the answer. You can read the entire Microsoft documentation. The link is available in the description box. This will give you better understanding of reason why I have chosen Polybase for both the pipelines. Now let's move on to the question number 190. The question says that you plan to monitor an Azure Data Factory by using the Monitor and Manage app. You need to identify the status and duration of activities that reference a table in the source database. Which three actions should you perform in the sequence? To answer, move the action from the list of action to the answer area and arrange them in correct order. So friends, please pay a good attention here in this question. Not only you have to tell the correct actions, but you also have to list them in the correct order. Now let's check out what are the options given. It says that from the data factory monitoring app, add the source user property to the activity run table. The option B is from the data factory monitoring app, add the source user property to the pipeline run table. Please mind the minute differences in both the options. Moving on to the third one, we have from the data factory authoring UI, publish the pipelines. The fourth one is from the data factory monitoring app, add a linked service to the pipeline run stable. The fifth option is from the data factory authoring UI, generate a user property for the source on all activities. The last one is from the data factory authoring UI, generate a user property for the source on all data sets. The correct answer for this question is option A, option C and option E. And friends, not to forget the correct sequence. The correct sequence for all these activity is this. 
So first on the list is this one, the option E. So this is the first activity or the action that you need to perform. The second one is this option A and the third one is option C. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 191. The question says that your company has two Microsoft Azure SQL databases named DB1 and DB2. You need to move data from a table in DB1 to a table in DB2 by using a pipeline in Azure Data Factory. You create an Azure Data Factory named ADF1. Which two types of objects should you create in ADF1 to complete the pipeline? Each correct answer presents the part of the solution and each correct selection is worth one point. Let's look at the options given. We have linked service. The other option is Azure Service Bus. Then we have sources and targets, input and output data sets. The last option given is transformation. And the correct answer for this question is option C, sources and targets and option E, transformations. Now let's move on to the next question, question number 192. The question says that you have an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool that contains a table, table 1. The table 1 contains the following. So in table 1, we have 1 billion rows and then we also have a clustered column store index. Then we have a hash distributed column named product key. Lastly, a column named sales date that is one of the date data type and cannot be null. So these are the following consideration that you must keep in mind. Let's move ahead with the question. It says 30 million rows will be added to the table one each month. You need to partition table one based on the sales date column. And we have already seen the specifications for the sales date. The solution must optimize the query performance and data loading. How often should you create a partition? Your options are once per month, once per year, once per day or once per week. And the correct answer for this question is once per year. Now let's move to the next question. Question number 193. The question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Data Lake storage account named My Account One. Now My Account One contains two containers named Container One and Container Two. The subscription is linked to an Azure Active Directory tenant that contains a security group named Group 1. You need to grant Group 1 read access to Container 1. The solution must use the principle of least privilege. Which role should you assign to Group 1? Your options are Storage Blob Data Reader to Container 1, Storage Table Data Reader to Container 1. The third option is Storage Blob Data Reader for My Account 1. The fourth one is Storage Table Data Reader for My Account 1. The correct answer for this question is option A, Storage Blob Data Reader for Container 1. Now let's take some questions that are part of a series based on a common scenario. So here comes the first question in this series, question number 194. The question says that you have an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool that contains a table named table 1. You have the files that are ingested and loaded into Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container named container 1. You plan to insert data from the files in container 1 into table 1 and transform the data. Each row of the data in the files will produce one row in the serving layer of the table 1. You need to ensure that when the source data files are loaded to the container 1, the date time is stored as an additional column in table 1. Now the solution given here is that you use a dedicated SQL pool to create an external table that has an additional date time column. Does this meet the goal? And of course, you have to tell whether this solution will fulfill this business case or not. The correct answer for this question is no. Now let me show you two other variations of the same question and we will also discover the correct solution. Here comes question number 195. The question is exactly the same. However, this time the answer or the solution given is that you should use an Azure Synapse Analytics serverless SQL pool to create an external table that has an additional date time column. Does this meet the goal? And this time also it is a no. So what's the correct solution? Let's check it out in question number 196. 
This time the solution given is in an Azure Synapse Analytics pipeline, you should use a data flow that contains a derived column transformation. Does this meet the goal? And this time my friends, the answer is yes. Okay, so friends, besides the DP203, a super important video was released on AZ104 case study as well. The thumbnail of this video is now appearing on your screen. So if you or anyone that you know is preparing for AZ104, please share this video with all of them. And for our friends who are just beginning to learn Azure, we have started a full course on Azure Fundamental that will give you a kickstart on Azure Cloud a course specifically designed for Azure beginners. So if you or your family members or your friends, anyone is interested, please share this video. Hope you have enjoyed today's questions on DP203. Please take a small moment to appreciate our work by liking this video and help us reach more and more cloud learners. Subscribe to the channel and share your suggestions and feedback on anything cloud related. You can join us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter where you can get regular short updates in cloud space. Thank you so much for learning with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.